exhibition of maps and documents themed Hoang Sa and Trường Sa of Vietnam, historical and legal evidence. National Heritage Council reveals current status of Điện Hải Citadel. Đà Nẵng develops Tiên Sa and Liên Chiu post into International Gateway. Hello, great to see you back on DRT News. After two fruitful working days with many practical discussions, the 11th APEC Senior Disaster Management Officials Forum closed on September the 22nd afternoon. The conference discussed and agreed on the necessary contents to submit to the senior meetings aiming at promoting and strengthening the inter-regional coordination and innovation in science and technology in service of emergency responses and rapid reconstruction after disaster. As the economic activities grow increasingly, the consequences caused by natural disasters could be increased, especially in the countries with asynchronous development. Through the forum, Vietnam desires that member economies will make greater strides and strengthen the science and technology cooperation, as well as integrate the recommendations stated in the Sendai framework into relevant socio-economic development plans. On September the 22nd afternoon, the Ministry of Information and Communications, in coordination with the Navy Region 3, held the opening ceremony for the exhibition featuring maps and documents themed Hoàng Sa Trường Sa of Vietnam, historical and legal evidence in the campus of Brigade 680. Deputy Minister of Information and Communications Hoàng Vĩnh Bảo attended the event. The exhibition showcased the evidence of Vietnam's sovereignty over Hoàng Sa and Trường Sa archipelagos and introduced to officials and soldiers of the armed forces and local people a wide range of documents, texts, objects, publications, and nearly 100 maps. According to the Ministry of Information and Communications, so far there have been 91 exhibitions under the theme of Vietnam sovereignty over Hoàng Sa and Trường Sa archipelagos, which have been held in 59 cities and provinces, 11 islands, island districts, and 21 armed units nationwide. The exhibition runs from September the 22nd to 24th. After the exhibition, the Ministry of Information and Communication will hand over the displayed map and documents to High Command of the Navy Region 3 to serve the work of propagating and introducing to officials and soldiers of the unit and local residents the national sacred sovereignty over the sea and islands. On September the 22nd afternoon, Da Nang Water Supply Choice Stock Company held an inauguration ceremony to officially put nine pumps at the Red Bridge Water Supply Plant into operation. Attending the meeting was Vice Chairman of the City People's Committee, Nguyễn Ngọc Tuấn. After eight months of implementation, the project of replacing nine water pumps at the Red Bridge Water Supply Plant with the high efficiency ones has been completed. The project has been implemented in Da Nang within the framework of the Joy Crediting Mechanism Model Project funded by the Ministry of Environment of Japan. This is a result of the joint research between Yokohama Water Supply Company Limited and Da Nang Water Supply Company to increase the pump efficiency and reduce power consumption. Accordingly, the CO2 emissions reduces by 600 tons per year. The power consumption at the Grade 1 pump station reduces by 100 kV per hour. At the Grade 2 pump station, the pressure increases from 42 to 52 meters, and the water flow increases from 170,000 cubic meters per day to 240,000 cubic meters per day, ensuring the better water supply for the whole city. On September the 23rd morning, a delegation of the National Heritage Council paid a visit to the Điện Hải Citadel to review and learn more about the current status of this relic site. On this occasion, Mr. Ho Tân Tuấn, Director of the Đà Nẵng Cultural Heritage Management Center, introduced the delegation some aspects of the historical site, such as the walls, surrounding landscape, especially the collection of the cannons at the Điện Hải Citadel. Reportedly, Da Nang has completed the dossier which will be submitted to the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism to recognize the Điện Hải Citadel as a special national historical relic. 
The visit to the enhanced citadel of the delegation from the National Heritage Council aims to re-evaluate the current status, serving as the basis for considering and recognizing the relic site as a special national historical relic. The city is going to develop Da Nang Port into an international gateway port, including two areas, Tien Sa and Lin Chiu. This is one of the contents of the project Development of Marine Economy in Da Nang City till 2025, with a vision to 2030, which has just been approved by the City People's Committee. Accordingly, Tien Sa, the passenger port, will be invested specialized wharfs for tourist ships. Linchu Port will serve container ships exclusively, both general cargo and liquid cargo. Da Nang will promote investment in the construction of dry docks to meet the demand for import and export of goods and transport of goods through the East West Economic Corridor, as well as issue policies supporting human resource training for logistics services. In addition, Da Nang will also develop new tourism products such as marine sports, yachting industry, complete coastal tourism infrastructure, enhance tour guides' capacity on marine and island sovereignty, upgrade the Thok Quang fishing wharf to Type 1 fishing port, and gradually develop a fleet of large capacity steel hued vessels, composite vessels, and composite hued wooden vessels. The total investment capital needed to develop the marine economy from now to 2030 is estimated at about $49 trillion. Da Nang Statistics Office stated that the social, economic and business manufacturing situation in the city over the past eight months has remained a positive growth in all sectors, in which there has been a considerable increase in the service sector, which has directly contributed to the growth of state budget revenue in the same period. According to the city's Department of Taxation, by August 31, 2017, the total budget revenue has acquired more than $13,000 billion, reaching 74% of estimates assigned by the central government. The rapid growth of the service sector has considerably contributed to the revenue in the first eight months of the year. In order to ensure the revenue in the remaining period, the city taxation has taken advantage of many solutions including improving the quality of forecasting analysis, regularly monitoring the tax collection situation in the locality, analyzing, evaluating and estimating revenues, analyzing factors that affect the increase or decrease of revenues in each area and industry. The APEC Economic Leaders Week 2017 will offer a golden opportunity for Da Nang to advertise the image of an ideal and attractive destination. In addition to embellishing the local streets, infrastructure and accommodation establishments, the city's tourism sector has also prepared for the travel tours to serve delegates and journalists attending this event. According to the Municipal Department of Tourism, in addition to making careful preparation in terms of reception, logistics, security and facilities, many tours for delegates participating in the APEC Economic Leaders Week 2017 have been made. In particular, six travel tours including the tourist spots in the central region for international journalists were built. The staff serving the events was also trained with professional skills to meet the very needs of guests in learning about the culture, cuisine, festivals and people of Vietnam. The city's tourism sector has also regularly popularized the tourism code of conduct to travelers and those working in tourism sector at the same time organizing professional training courses on housekeeping, reception, service attitudes, customer care skills, communication skills, skill to handle situation and resolve customers' complaints to ready for the APEC Economic Leaders Week. On September the 23rd morning at the city's Labor Culture House, the Department of Tourism held a contest themed Students' Dry Tour Guide Shop. The contest attracted the participation of 95 students from universities, colleges and professional secondary schools in Da Nang and Quang Nam. The preliminary round, which takes place on the 23rd and 24th of September, is aimed at selecting top 15 contestants to enter the final round scheduled to be held on September the 30th. The contest is an opportunity for students to show their talents as well as improve the knowledge for their jobs in the future. 
Reportedly, the contest will be held annually to contribute to searching for young tour guides for travel companies as well as seeking high-quality human resources for the city in the time to come. That's the end of today's news. Please log on to drt.danang.vn for more news and updates. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.